waiting. Good. Let's get this over with. Sure. Mara, Bella, Kinnereth, Akatosh, the Binds, please help me. Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamertag is iryani, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, -E and then you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan and welcome back to another episode of Modded Monday. We're on week number 263 now, guys. I've picked out five new mods for you guys to check out and perhaps add them to your load order if you find them interesting. But like always, before we jump into them, I want to remind you guys that I'm partnered with Gamersups, which in my opinion is the best energy drink on the market. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to check out the link in the description where you can go to their store page and you can also use the code RTD for a 10% discount on all your purchases. I also want to say don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any brand new mods each and every single week. Now that all that's out of the way, we can jump into this week's mods. And starting us off, we have a simple crafting mod called Orion, a crafting overhaul. The mod page reads, have you ever been annoyed by the items that don't have breakdown recipes in Skyrim? No matter what smelting or crafting overhaul you've tried, there's always something that didn't have a breakdown recipe? Well, never again. They present to you today, Orion, a crafting overhaul. With over 520 brand new handcrafted recipes to break down any and everything. Every single armor and weapon that isn't unique, unless it has a special place in the Legacy of the Dragonborn Museum, can now be broken down into materials. But what about Falmer and Forsworn stuff? What about stuff from the DLCs? Yes, Falmer and armor weapons can now be broken down into Shellbug Chiton, and the Forsworn armor and weapons can now be broken down into pelts and ingredients such as large and small antlers. All of those misc items just laying around for no reason, every single one has a breakdown recipe too. A lute, a flute, drum, plates, forks, knives, dwemer clutter, yes, everything. You know how you'd always for some reason be able to break down some fur and leather armor but not others? Not a problem any longer. They triple checked every single recipe with over 520 added into the game. Each of these recipes were handmade for optimal immersion. Base jewelry can now be broken down into gems, basic gold and silver rings can be smelted into gold and silver respectively, and they did make sure the gems that you get from jewelry are flawless too. Lockpicks can also be crafted now as well as wooden and hunting bows, and hearthfire building items can be broken down into nails, locks, hinges, and more. So if you followed this channel for a while, or maybe my load orders in the past, you know that we've used mods such as the Smeltdown update, which pretty much does the same thing, but not to this scale. 520 unique recipes that you can break things down is absolutely amazing. I'm very impressed that they were able to cover everything within Skyrim, so no matter what you're working on, no matter what you're trying to craft, you'll always be able to break down other things that you find inside of caves, such as enemies that have weapons and armor. Let's say that you're killing a bunch of bandits within a cave, and you already have a really good iron sword, and you're just looking to spruce it up a little bit now you can pick up their iron sword take it down and smelt it and then you can use the iron ingots that you get from that sword to make yours better and that's just one of the many scenarios that this mod could fit into your playthrough and the fact that it also comes in at 75.67 kilobytes it'll pretty much disappear into your load order and feel like it was part of the base game and that's definitely why this mod's featured here to number five spot so i'd strongly recommend downloading the orion crafting overhaul mod Coming in at the number 4 spot, we have a very small immersion mod that builds off of one of the previous settlements in Skyrim and makes it into its own little town. This is the Thandom of Darkwater Crossing, and the mod page reads that this mod turns Darkwater Crossing into a small town and village, adding a blacksmith, farmers, and a fortress for the Thane as well as homes for everyone. Thandom of Darkwater Crossing has gotten a big facelift since its last update, so there's no more shoddy houses without interiors. Now Darkwater Crossing comes with a small stone fort for the Thane, a blacksmith couple has been added to the settlement, and the rest of the OG citizens have now got roofs over their heads, and new families have been added too. Mostly serving as farmers to the farm that's been expanded, and that's really all this mod does, but I absolutely love it because I love when the forgotten about places of Skyrim actually get touched up or actually get shown some love in the 
the Skyrim modding community because you always see giant city overhauls of cities that you know people mod all the time or cities that you're traveling to all the time but stumbling across this for the first time whenever you have the mod installed and you're just exploring Skyrim actually will feel really nice because you'll be able to stumble across a nice little community that's thriving with or without you being there and I really like to see that. And as you can see, as I'm showing you around and giving you a tour of some of the buildings and just showing you how it's all combined together, it's a really small area that's just been touched up over the years and it actually looks like the people are thriving and actually building a little settlement here. So if you want a small little immersion boost whenever you're exploring Skyrim and you want to just touch up some of the different parts of Skyrim that don't really get traveled to as often, then the Thandom of Darkwater Crossing is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out. So go download it and add it to your load order as well. Coming in at the number 3 spot, we have an incredibly badass new spell mod for you mages out there. This is Astral Magic 2. And the mod page reads that you can now master the flow of magicka that shapes reality and draw energy from Aetherius and smite foes with the power of the stars. Some of the spells that come along with this mod include Astral Bite, which quickly fires a bolt of Aetherius energy, dealing points of damage and staggering the target. You also have Astral Blitz, which fires a streak of Aster Light, dealing damage to Magicka and Stamina. There's Astral Crash, which calls down a piece of Aetherius, and the Comet crashes onto the targeting area, dealing magic damage. Moving on, you have Astral Flare, which fires a streak of light, dealing damage to the target's health, and then the actual Astral Light spell floods enemies with condensed Whispering Magicka, rendering a percentage of their weapon's damage output. You also get a Rune spell, which you can cast on nearby surfaces, and it explodes for a damage amount and spawns a friendly Magic Wisp. There's Astral Shower, which summons a shower of Stardust, and each comet crashes down onto the targeting area, dealing magic damage as well. You also have the Astral Spear, Astral Wave, and Astral Strike spells, and many of these Astral spells have upgraded in more powerful versions. Level 1 spell tomes are integrated into leveled lists dynamically, and they should appear randomly like vanilla spell tomes during your adventures. You can also find Astral Magic spell tomes in the Snow Elf Temple as well, but there's some other ways to get the higher level Astral spells. You can kill magic anomalies during the College of Winterhold's main quest or after the Aftershock Radiant quest. Sometimes they're sold by Feralda, and they're rare dropped in warlock boss chests too. And these small gameplay segments that I'm showing you guys right here just scratch the surface of what's possible using these mods. You truly have to experience Astro Magic for yourself because there's so many badass spells that you can use and the fact that they got a bunch of different effects that I've never seen on any other spells, these are truly unique effects that have been added into the game. All within 4.22 megabytes, it's really impressive how they were able to add all this in without taking up too much memory space. So if you mainly play as a mage whenever you're going through Skyrim, or maybe you're just creating a mage load order for yourself, I would strongly recommend adding Astral Magic 2 to that list because these are absolutely badass spells and I had a blast testing them and they do so much damage as well. And the fact that they're so much different than any other spell that you find throughout Skyrim just makes it really cool to use in combat. So I'd strongly recommend downloading the Astral Magic 2 mod. Coming in at the number 2 spot, we have an incredibly made armor mod that can't seem to stay off the popular tab of the mod page. This is the Seasoned Traveler armor. And the mod page reads that this is a beautiful protective standalone armor and accessories for explorers and adventurers. There's male and female versions with weight sliders, five colors available to pick and choose from, one-handed and two-handed swords that's been added, backpacks, a pickaxe, and a walking stick, it has full support for beast races, and you can craft all of these items at any forge, and you can temper them too. And like I said, this mod can't seem to stay off the popular tab, and it's gotten a lot of traction recently, so I decided we should definitely cover it on the channel because it's a brilliant armor mod. And it doesn't just add armor, like I said, it adds weapons, it has a bunch of different colors and backpacks as well that you can choose from, and the fact that it's not just one armor set, it has a bunch of different colors, so no matter what type of look you're going for, there's going to be a color that supports it, and the backpacks that have been added also have different colors as well. You have a red, green, black, dark blue, and and more to choose from and the other things that they've added alongside it such as a regular pickaxe that looks really really cool i like the pickaxe that they've added into the game as well as the short little hunting knife that they've added that's a really cool touch and the walking stick is also very nice too 
I really feel like this type of armor set could fit any type of character that you're going for, whether you're playing a mage or just someone who explores Skyrim and does a bunch of hand-to-hand -hand combat or, you know, no matter what type of character that you have, I feel like this seasoned traveler armor will definitely reflect the look that you're going for because there's so many different colors to choose from, like I said, so much equipment to use as well, and it's themed in such a way that it kind of dips its toes into every different type of character that you can play through. So if you're looking for a new armor mod in Skyrim that's a one-stop shop for any type of character that you may have, then the Seasoned Traveler armor is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out, and that's why it's featured here at a number two spot, so I strongly recommend downloading it and giving it a try for yourself. Coming in at the number one spot this week, we have a brand new follower mod to accompany you in all of your travels throughout Skyrim. This is Arlen Dawnstone, the Reclusive Philosopher. And the mod page reads that Arlen is an Aldmer Dawn sorceress from long times past, seeking peace and redemption in a world gone mad. It's a custom voiced follower with well over a thousand lines of dialogue, and Arlen is designed to be a game-long companion, as well as a tragic hero, on her quest to seek a lost ideal, and unravel the mysteries of her ancient past. She combines a dramatic writing style with a deluge of interesting topics and conversations, making her a truly memorable character that will walk beside you as you fulfill the prophecies of Elder Scrolls and reshape Tamriel. Arlen possesses a rich and unique backstory, advanced commentary on notable locations, and a fully-fledged array of relationship dialogues that reflects your actions and dynamic reactions to the choices you make throughout the game. From completing grand quest lines to helping paupers, many of the conversations are unlocked as you travel through Tamriel, so just talk to her in many places as possible. And whenever it comes to her backstory, her past is more varied and tenuous than you might think. Arlen's first memory was waking up on an Aldmeri ship, sailing through the seas of bitter cold. All of the other passengers were grievously wounded, and the navigator refused to speak to her. Through the stories of books under the ship's deck, she learned that she was pursued by the House Dereni. And as soon as her ship reached port, Arlen's been trying to learn why she was on that ill-fated voyage ever since. And to that effect, she spent centuries sequestered in the Crystal Tower, operated an infernal machine far below the forest of Valenwood, dueled a Telvanni wizard for an Elder Scroll, and finally sought refuge with the Greybeards, high upon the slopes of the Throat of the World. There she still remains, and that's where you can find her within this mod, seeking inner peace through meditation. Moving on to her combat style, Arland is devastating in ranged combat, using a variant of Sunfire and Vampire's Bane that's capable of harming any opponent. And she also has a wide variety of perks appropriate for an Ancient Dawn Sorceress, and she also grants you two perks while actively following you, which is First Light, which increases your Magicka by 100 points, and Fires of Dawn, which increases Frost Resistance by 50%. She starts off at level 15 and will level the player all the way up to 80, and she's a master at destruction, restoration, one-handed, and heavy armor, and she's also quite adept at alteration. Arland also provides master level destruction training and sells a wide variety of spells and tomes as well. So there's so much backstory and lore and features that come along with this mod that it definitely makes sense that it comes in at 662.05 megabytes. And this, although being a very large follower mod, there's so much that it adds and it just gives you a lifelong companion to travel along your side throughout Skyrim. And this is a brilliant mod. She also runs on her own custom follower system, making her fully compatible with all follower management tools and other custom voice companions too. This is an incredibly impressive follower mod, and I would definitely recommend adding her to your next playthrough throughout Skyrim, because there's thousands of unique dialogue that you'll be able to hear in special moments too. Whenever you're in certain quests, she'll be able to comment on what's going on within the quest, or if you stumble across a new Dwemer ruin and you go inside, she'll be able to comment on that as well. No matter where you are in Skyrim, she'll have something to say that goes alongside it, and that's definitely why this mod's featured here at a number one spot. So if you're looking for a brand new follower mod to travel by your side throughout Skyrim, Skyrim, then Arlen Dawnstone, the Reclusive Philosopher, is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out, so go download it and add her to your next playthrough of Skyrim for yourself. It was but a crisp, cool morning, and the greybeards were shouting down the glacial peaks, with a voice like thunder unleashed. I approached that bronze portal, and took my first step into a haven where I hoped would last a thousand years. Yet no monk rose to greet me, no wise master with whiskers bleached like pallid snow, Instead, it was a boy who first ran to acknowledge my presence. Who... who are you? I've never seen you around here before, miss, the lad said. Are you an elf? I've heard of people like you before, but never seen one for myself. Can you cast magic without using your voice? 
I smiled, and my heart knew relief, for there was still innocence in the world, far away from the blood and fire that had raised Tamriel asunder. I showed the lad a display of light that lit up the ancient stones high atop the barren peak, and later became his mentor throughout the long winters. I learned from him the ways of peace, innocence and temperance, and he saw in me the knowledge of the ages, and the viewpoint with which to use and interpret it. I, I even witnessed his death, and wept at another spark lost to time, yet vowed to play the same role with Arngir, his only pupil, who speaks with his voice to this very day. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the Top 5 Skyrim Mods of the Week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new. It really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future Top 5 Mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description, and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I will talk to you guys later.